This tutorial is brought to you by one of the authors of Revising Professional Writing, now in its third edition. My students call me Dr. Kim. The publishers made this video available under a Creative Commons license. For more information, contact parlaypress.com. Remember, you can use the pause button at any time, and if you see shadows or something weird on the screen, try changing your playback quality settings. Well, the view you see here includes everything you might learn about professional writing in my tutorials. There are others that help you understand content development, organization, style, and mechanics as well as the rhetorical context that determines which content organization or style is going to be effective in a specific situation. Although our primary interest in this tutorial is the message itself, effective content development can only be judged by taking into account the other corners of the rhetorical triangle, the writer's purpose and audience. I should remind you that I'm going to focus on addressing an audience from Western cultures. This tutorial focuses on one area of content development in professional writing, specifically persuasive prose. While you may have heard some of what I'll be explaining before, I'll help you understand how to apply persuasion techniques in the workplace by discussing the content of a business plan written by a manufacturing company called Fabrica. I've revised the original for instructional purposes. Remember, the quality in these videos makes it nearly impossible for you to read on the screen. If you're a student using our book, your instructor can provide you with a copy of the document, or you can always download it at prosewrite.com. In the situation with this document, the investors are reading a business plan, so they know the writer's trying to convince them to invest their money in the writer's business. That means the readers are unwilling to accept or skeptical of the writer's message. On the other hand, the readers did choose to read the plan, which means they're interested in investing their money in someone's business. That makes them a little less unwilling or sensitive. For help understanding levels of sensitivity, watch the tutorial on audience and pay special attention to the part on readiness. The important point here is that the writer has to overcome the reader's unwillingness to accept the document's message by providing persuasive content. So in this tutorial, I'll explain the three elements involved in persuasive prose. Hopefully, I'll also convince you that developing persuasive content is critical to the success of this business plan. All right. Let's begin with the claim as the first of the three elements of persuasive content. Take a minute to look at this passage which appears within Fabrica's business plan. Your task is to identify the writer's claim. You probably struggled to identify the point or claim being made in this passage. That's because the writer did not actually state it. The writer of this business plan could increase the readiness of the audience by providing an explicit claim, as shown here in the revision, and especially if it was included at the beginning of the passage. I discuss organization of claims at length in the tutorials on bottom line and paragraph unity. The second element of persuasive content is evidence. The passage you're going to look at is a claim found in Fabrica's business plan. I want you to consider how evidence could enhance its persuasiveness. If the writer adds the evidence shown here, the audience should be more willing to accept the writer's claim because they've seen authoritative and verifiable evidence that the market is large. The evidence is authoritative because it comes from a reputable source with specific expertise in textile production. The evidence is verifiable because the audience could see the evidence for themselves. Finally, the evidence is relevant because textile production is a reasonable way of measuring the size of the market. On the other hand, if the writer added the second piece of evidence shown here, the audience should be even more willing to accept the writer's claim 
because now they've seen timely, representative, and relevant evidence that the market wants the business's product. The evidence is timely because it comes from current users of the business's product. The evidence is representative because it focuses on potential customers on four continents. And finally, the evidence is relevant because it deals specifically with sales of the business's product. To persuade an unwilling audience, a professional writer must provide effective evidence supporting his or her claims. So, for that evidence to be convincing, it needs to be authoritative, timely, verifiable, representative, complete, and relevant. Alright, the third element of persuasive content deals with the interpretation of evidence supporting a claim. It's also called the warrant. This information is probably new to many of you. I want you to look at a revised version of the passage from the previous slide. It now has both an explicit claim and supporting evidence. But let's consider how interpretation of that evidence would enhance the persuasiveness of the writer's message. Part of the writer's claim is that the market for the business's product is large. That claim is supported by evidence of the size of the potential market. However, the audience doesn't care a bit about how large the market is unless Fabrica can capture a portion of it. The writer will be far more persuasive if the passage includes an explicit interpretation or warrant of the evidence, which takes this into account. The warrant shown here in this revision, by 2004 we can sell one of every five production runs, etc., etc., that warrant connects the writer's claim about the size of the market to the evidence, the number of separate production runs of woven patterns does that by stating the criteria by which the audience is likely to evaluate that evidence. It's only effective evidence if it connects to the potential of Fabrica's product. Before I conclude with the interpretation of evidence, I want to consider anticipated objections. Take a second to look at another passage from Fabrica's business plan. I want you to consider how anticipating an audience objection at this point in the document would help the writer be more persuasive. In this case, the writers made an explicit claim. There are four reasons for the business to sell fabric samples instead of looms. The four reasons focus on the negatives associated with loom sales. The potential investors might be thinking well, just because there are challenges to loom sales doesn't mean that there's no market for looms. In the revision, the writer voices that objection. The writer states, what our target group wants is not additional machines in their mills, and then dismisses that objection by adding what they want is quick quality samples at a low cost. In this way, the writer enhances the persuasiveness of the passage by dismissing the audience's potential objection. Knowledge of your audience's potential objections to the claims you want to make is critical if you want to make them willing to accept those claims. Now it's time to check your understanding of developing persuasive prose by analyzing a passage that you haven't seen before. The question asks that you supply the writer's missing interpretation or unstated assumption. You're looking at an example from an international economic report. The claim here is that Americans do not know Indian history. The evidence is that they didn't understand Indian-Pakistani conflict. The missing unstated assumption is that understanding history is a prerequisite for understanding the current conflict. This assumption is what connects the claim to the evidence. Stating it is more likely to overcome any unwillingness on the part of the audience, as long as they have no objections to this interpretation. I've explained the three elements of persuasive prose by referring to a business plan written for potential investors who are somewhat sensitive to the content of the document. Revisions, in order to make claims explicit, 
to provide effective evidence for claims, to make criteria for interpreting the evidence explicit, and to anticipate audience objections are all required in order for the writer to create a persuasive business plan. Note that an understanding of the rhetorical context is essential to effectively achieve the writer's purpose in the workplace. The more the writer knows about the audience, the more persuasive his or her evidence and warrants will be for his or her specific readers. My tutorials were designed to guide you after you've written a draft. However, this tutorial on persuasive prose could be used while you're planning what to write. You might use the list of three elements as a heuristic for thinking about what your claims, evidence, and warrants should be. The same is true of the other development tutorials. As I said in the tutorial on informative prose, I've noticed workplace writers struggle far less than student writers in developing enough content for a draft document. I believe that's a consequence of the fact that no one writes in the workplace without some need to communicate a message. Unfortunately, students are often forced to write, even when they have no such need.